right, it's time for another episode of Keeping It Real Estate, where we take a look at the real issues facing commercial and residential real estate today. We're with your real estate expert, the real expert on this, Roseanne Nitty. Hey, Roseanne. Hey, Paul. Good afternoon. How are you? Good afternoon. Welcome. Who'd you bring with you today? Well, today is my second show, and I'm thrilled to have my friend and colleague, Car- Karen Hall, with me. <laughs> Whenever it's, I look think at... Think of it like Karen with an attitude. Karen, right? yeah, 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 yeah. And uh, we're going to... She is with um, You Direct IRA Services. Yes. And we're going to have a conversation regarding IRAs. But first, I just wanted to um, have Karen tell our listeners a little bit about herself. You're a single mom. Oh, yeah, yeah. And and, uh, and they're about to graduate from college. Isn't that exciting? Oh, it's you know? thrilling. Oh, yeah. guy, any, any day now. So Some uh, extra money for trips. <laughs> <laughs> what will that be like? And so, you know, my son wants to invest in real estate, and my daughter is a math major, and she wants to travel the world. So we'll see what happens. But but cool. real estate's so really cool. crucial to my whole life, you know, like it is to yours. But I was a First, I was, well, in radio for 17 years, and then I made the logical transition into real estate, and I became a realtor for a year <laughs> and drove people around in my car and, and uh, said, well, and I well, then I got engaged and got married and became the trailing spouse. So I, I did mortgage loan servicing for a number of years, like eight years, and then got into mortgage loan origination for the whole thing was probably Crazy 16 years. Too. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. And yeah, it, especially it was just it was like pre crash is when I got out and wow. got into the self-directed IRA industry in 2007. Very cool. So Very it's been cool. a couple of years. Very nice. I have a self-directed IRA, and I own property in my self-directed IRA. Fabulous. So I know a little bit about them. And let's tell people, what is a self-directed IRA, and how do I open one? Right. Well, there can be a lot of misconceptions about what a self-directed IRA is. People think that they don't understand. So an IRA is an IRA. It's like a bucket. And so the rules for regular IRAs are the same as self-directed IRAs. There's no different rule. The only difference between a typical IRA, like you may have at Charles Schwab or where you know, or you know, TD Ameritrade or Northwestern Mutual, someplace like that, and a self-directed IRA is the kind of asset you can put into that bucket, right? Gotcha. gotcha. So okay. stocks, bonds, and mutual <laughs> funds over here you might want to put a house over here or a note or precious metals or private stock, a lot of different things. Something different. Something, Something different. alternative assets. Yeah. And how would one open a self-directed IRA? Carefully. Okay. No. <laughs> <laughs> you know, no, you just go on our website, you know, and it says open an account and you click and go and our the we've got a form and it's form fillable. You type it in and Very you know, easily. ship it over to us. Yeah, really, we make it really, really easy. user friendly. We do. But you know, like we were talking about it, you know, before the show, there are rules that you want to know about. So I know you want to talk about that later on. So Yeah, uh, we'll get more specific. So uh, tell me, are self directed IRAs for everyone? You know, no, they're not for everyone because it is it is self-directed. I mean, the word self comes first, and so you're going to be doing a lot more yourself than you would when you've got a financial advisor really doing a lot of hand-holding for you and doing a lot of the work because with a self-directed IRA, we're not telling you what investment to, to invest to in. To do. It's your choice. Right. You make it, the choices. And my misconception originally, too, I asked you earlier, was is it just for self-employed people? Right. Everyone so has misconceptions. So that something I had thought, hmm, that's a weird one. Well, right. it could be, you could be self-employed and have a self-directed IRA, or you could just... You have be or be, you know have, be not self-employed. You know be employed elsewhere and have it be a W two person. But you have to have active income to contribute to an IRA. That's the it's your money and you decide entry. what to do with it. That's hey, right. show me the money. That's Let me right. tell you what to do with my well, money. Well, and you decide. Hey, I'm going to invest in the stock market. Hey, I'm going to invest outside the stock market. Well, we're the outside the stock market people. And that's cool. So speaking of that, now. What kind of assets can a self-directed IRA hold? Oh, so many. It, it, you know, it's the, interesting. When yeah. I first met you and I was learning, well, <laughs> there's all these different things. So, Well, you know, when they created IRAs in 1974, and it, the ERISA Act went to effect in 75, they didn't say what your IRA can invest in, just what it can't invest in. And it's a short list. Gotcha. It's life right. insurance contracts and collectibles. All right, so according to the IRS, everything else is okay. Now, I have to say that your IRA can't be a shareholder in an S corporation, but only because S corporations don't let you do that. You have to be a human being to be a shareholder of an S corp. Okay, that's how it works. But everything else is fair game. Now, that's what the IRS says. And then it comes down to the custodial level. What is administratively feasible? What is a custodian willing to custody? For example, some self-directed IRA companies will let you invest in racehorses. 
Very cool. I know. I want a horse. Cool. I want yeah, a horse too. Absolutely. But you can't have any personal use, so it's just an investment, right? But well, that's an asset we don't custody. It's not administratively fe feasible for us to custody. I mean, they're kind of messy, and when you have them in the office, they're kind of smelly, you know. So hard to custody <laughs> gotcha. a horse. Right, I'm, right, I'm, right. I'm being facetious, but yeah. So, so, so the the custodian gets to decide, uh, make a business decision for their business, what assets they will and won't custody. So the IRS gives us one bar. And the custodian gives us another bar of what they will and won't custody. Very cool. And then one of my questions was, can I have this self-directed IRA with someone else? Yes. Or is it just like if my sister or my friend or a cousin or something? Can you we like co-invest? Co-invest co together? Yeah, 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 you can. And it, it's interesting. So I think we talk about the rules just a little bit here because some okay. people are disallowed to your IRA. Okay. Your sister is awesome. Okay. But your lineal ascendants and descendants up and down the family tree, they're disallowed to your IRA. Plus, anybody offering services to the plan or a fiduciary, some, you know, somebody's giving you, like maybe a realtor could be a fiduciary, right? Okay. okay. So they're disallowed. So your IRA, but, uh, and so those people are disallowed. Your IRA doesn't invest in assets they own, but you, your IRA and their IRA or their cash can invest concurrently, even a disallowed person. It's an exception to that disallowed person rule. Very as long cool. as you invest concurrently, I like that. you can do that. I like that. And yeah. those are interesting. And I think that's why people need to talk to you. Yeah. So they know what to do. Ins and outs. And that's what we do. You know, people call us and we say, well, tell us about, we want to get, you know, what's your name? How'd you hear of us? But we want to know, tell us about your investment. What do you want to do? Because that's what we want to hear about. Tell us about the investment. We want to hear if it sounds How like a prohibited work, transaction. Absolutely. Yeah. And and I think, um, and that's what we're talking about, the rules that we should know about. What are the specific rules that we should know about? Well, they're called prohibited transactions. Okay. And if you are a rule book kind of girl, you want to look them up, you know, <laughs> it's in the Internal Revenue Code IRC 4975. That's where you can go look. But the short I've version. I've seen that. I've looked it up. And, oh, have you and really? I've, I've, oh, I've you're good. I've looked through it a little bit. You're exceptional. But I think it's better for me and maybe some people out there to talk to an expert like you right. to get the pros and cons and, and boil it the down. Direction. Yeah, right. yeah, because you know where I talked about disallowed people. You're not allowed to offer any services to the plan. So say your IRA buys a house and the house needs a new, you know, whatever, garbage disposal, you can't go in and install that garbage disposal yourself. The IRS calls us, you'll love it, an over-contribution of sweat equity. Oh, right? wow. Right? I know, <laughs> I know. They tax you when you die, so you know. So it's not a do-it-yourself the tax, they situation. tax you when you sweat. Right. Yeah. So, so everything on, is arm's <laughs> length, but you're a realtor, you get arm's length. You right, understand absolutely, that. right. And so when people are buying some a home within their IRA, that, that IRA pays all of the bills, yes. all the insurances, it all of the must. repairs, yeah. and everything that goes with it. Yeah, and and for example, we've had people maybe like one woman got a home equity line of credit on her personal house to put a new roof on her IRA owned house. Oops, prohibited transaction because you're commingling funds and so forth. And so, let's talk about real quick about prohibited transactions and to say that if you commit one, what happens? I mean, just yeah, what will they do? Yeah, they're gonna come like, get they you. Come, yeah, yeah, I yeah. know they just run to your house IRS and grab police. you. Yeah, no, not yet, but. <laughs> What they, what they do is, it, it's nothing like that. It's just that your IRA is disallowed. So all of a sudden you don't have an IRA. It's not considered an IRA oh, anymore. Okay. It's considered your personal money, like you earned it, now you owe tax on it. Gotcha. Maybe penalties. A lot of taxes So don't and commit a prohibited transaction. It's I get very it. bad. Oh, really interesting. So what are some of the common mistakes that you see people make? Things yeah. like that? Taking constructive use of your IRA or the IRA-owned assets is a big mistake. Uh, so, like for example, your IRA has a rental property, and you have renters, and they're paying your IRA the rent every month. But instead of letting that I, that rent money go to your IRA like it should, you take that rent money and you just put it in your pocket. Or go on a vacation. Yeah, or and you spend it so. buy a new car or something like, that, or whatever you're going to do. You do that, and then you've taken constructive use of your IRA funds. Boom! You just blew it, and that's not an IRA anymore. It gets dispersed to you. You get 1099. It's a taxable event. So speaking of that, if I were to use your services for my RRA, do you manage the property? Not really. I would have yeah. to hire a property manager because right. as a realtor, I wouldn't be able to manage my own property. Exactly. I could hire a property manager, yes. and then they would collect all of the rents, and then deliver that to you yes. into your, uh, uh, like a third party accommodator. Right? Yeah, well, let's talk about that. So there are some things you can do, like if you own a property, right? So you can screen the tenants, you can pick up and collect the rent checks made payable to the IRA. You can hire third party vendors to do the work and you can, that's kind of it. You know, that's what you do as a property manager anyway. The only thing you're not gonna do property management wise is do the work yourself. 
you right. hire everything okay. out. So, so I could manage my own property within my IRA. To that extent, exactly okay. correct. Okay. Yeah. But if there's mm -hmm. if there's something coming that has to be paid out, it gets it gets paid directly out of the IRA. Yes. Yeah. And so homeowners insurance, taxes, yes. all of that stuff. I yes. don't think people realize how many items actually would come out of that. Yeah, when people say to me, well, what kind of reserve do I have to have my IRA? And that was going to be my next question. Oh, really? Okay. So what would the bumper yeah. be? What would the buffer be on a reserve? Well, and we know that coming from the real estate mortgage world, there's like a six-month cushion or the, the lender will require these cushions. We don't. It's self-directed. Gotcha. So you decide for yourself how much of a cushion you need. We don't have those rules. You're It's self-directed. You're the investment advisor. You're making those decisions yourself. So we're when we tell you what you can and can't do, it only has – it's within regard to what's administratively feasible – if it's a whether or not it's a prohibited transaction, but how much of a of a of a cushion you should have is entirely up to you. Gotcha. And then if the house needs a new roof and I don't have the money for that, yes. I have to add that into my IRA. And there's only a specific well, dollar amount that I can add in annually. Yeah, that's true. So a couple things. There are six things you can do um, if you run out of money. Okay. So you can make a contribution. You're right. So a contribution is based upon your age and your income and your account type. And you okay. want to talk to your tax advisor. Okay. So you're right. You can write a check and make a contribution. That's one thing. If your self-directed IRA had other assets, you could sell those assets and use them to pay the shortfall. You know, okay. So you could do that. Um, if you had an IRA across the street, you could liquidate some of those stocks, bonds, and mutual funds and bring them over, transfer them. It takes a couple weeks for the transfer to come in. But you can do that. Liquidate that and bring it in. You could take on a debt partner. Um, you could take on. You could borrow money. You could take on a non-recourse loan. Oh, okay. And if all that fails, you could just sell the asset if, if your IRA can't afford to keep it. That happens sometimes. Well, let's hope not. Yeah, but, you yeah. want to plan ahead. Yeah, plan so, ahead. So one last question. Approximately, before we take a, a commercial break, uh, approximately how much money do people really start up their self-directed IRAs with? I guess it would depend on the asset. Well, it depends upon really the person and how much okay. they've saved for retirement because they're going to move a retirement account usually over into a self-directed IRA. Okay. So our average account size is 135000 Okay. but we're, we don't have an account minimum. Just we need ask you to leave $325 in the account. But you, when you open a self-directed IRA, it's, again, self-directed. You could open with, with a $5,500 contribution, or maybe you used to work at Boeing and you've got – Five hundred thousand dollars that you, from your old four hundred one k you're going to roll over. Gotcha. So, the, so yeah. you can start yes. with as little as three hundred and twenty five dollars yes. yes. and start contributing yes. and saving. Correct. And, and then we can get in after the break into some of the other things besides property yes. that we can do with our self directed Love IRA. It. All right. Well, thanks so much. We'll be back in a minute. <laughs> Everyone knows that moving is one of the most stressful times in a person's life. And the worst part? Searching for cardboard boxes, it's absolutely prehistoric. Digging through dumpsters, going from store to store, or buying stacks of them, you're only going to throw away later. Well, now there's an answer. Bungo Box. Bungo Boxes are durable, stackable, eco-friendly, plastic moving containers that will cut the cost of your packing supplies in half. And they're made of hard plastic, which gives you much more protection for your precious belongings. Much better than cardboard. Bungo boxes hold over 100 pounds per box, plus our boxes never, ever need tape. That's right, no tape. But since our Bungo boxes come with fitted dollies, your movers will move at the speed of light. So whether you, your friends, or your office are moving, there's really only one solution, Bungo Box. Find out more at BungoBoxOC.com. That's BungoBoxOC.com. Or call 714-725-7292. You order them, we deliver them. You move, we pick them up. That's BunkoBoxOC.com. All right, we're back with our real experts here. Can I ask you a real-life question? This is out of my own real life here. <laughs> Let's hear please it. Please do. Please so do. So if these things are so incredible and you can do all these investments and easy to set and run and everything, why don't we all do it? I don't have a self-directed IRA. <laughs> why Why do so few of us do this? Well, I, I think one reason is because, well, there's a lot of lack of knowledge. People don't know you can. It's kind of like they're the afraid. best kept they secret. They don't know what to do. Yeah, yeah. Or maybe they're afraid to. Or, may, or maybe yeah. somebody, because when you're investing outside the stock market, you have to invest in an asset class that you understand. Right. So that means that you understand People real estate. People get confused. They do. You, yeah. That you understand how to invest in notes. You understand how to invest in precious metals. 
So it, so basically, once you understand how to invest in the in the alternative assets, then it, the jump to self-directed IRAs is just very logical. It is like a light bulb going off. When I first um, had moved back to California, I had a, a um, IRA with the corporation that I owned and I left behind. And then I had this little chunk and thought, what am I going to do with this? And I met some people mm -hmm. that did land banking and moved that self-directed, you know, opened yeah. up a self-directed and bought a piece of property with it. And I still own it today. And, you know, luckily the, uh, Taxes aren't too much, so that that's I, awesome. Yeah. You know, so yeah, little little by little, but that's how I learned about it, and I thought it was a great thing because, personally, with the volatility of the stock market right now, if you notice where it is, I mean, some oh, it's people always will say bouncing. it's a buy opportunity, but when we look at the prices of homes and real estate here in Orange County or across the nation, I think real estate's just such a great investment. Now. I just have a quick question in regards to that. Um, did we answer, Paul? Paul, did we answer your question? Well, the other half of it is where the heck do I go do this thing? I can't, <laughs> just, I can't just go oh. get a little uh, Google it and go on YouTube probably and figure maybe I can. I don't know. Well, <laughs> you know, uh, you, you go to udirectira.com. That's where you start. So awesome. not YouTube, but awesome. udirect. There you direct. The letter U, udirectira.com. So my question is, one of my questions is, so... I own, a, I buy a house or an apartment complex or whatever it is with my with my self-directed IRA, and I'm plugging along, and now the appreciation on this property has doubled. How does the IRS see that with inside the IRA? Great question. Right. So every so with when you've got um, a regular IRA, the IRS knows what it's worth because it's a stock, and there's you can pick up your cell phone and you know what it's worth. Right. But when it's a self-directed IRA, we don't know. So every year we ask you for a valuation. Tell us what it's worth. And so okay. you give us uh, the valuation of it, and we report that to the IRS. So if a you're reasonable valuation. Well, yeah. Well, yes. <laughs> right. I mean, yeah. not so, what you think your home's worth. Oh, but correct. What it really yeah, is an actual like a, a BPO worker's valuation. opinion of value right. or something like that. If it's okay. a house, sure. Right. But if you're going to have a taxable event like um, you're going to do a Roth conversion or maybe you've got to take your 70 and a half you have to take out required minimum distributions right. or you want to take a withdrawal and you need to withdraw it then you have to get an actual appraisal to appraise the value and get a real third-party valuators official opinion uh, for the value. Now is that appraiser someone that I could hire myself or someone that has to go sure. through no, the, they don't. No, it's not like it's, yeah. I can just hire someone and say hey, I need appraise my property for this. because yeah, I need to, I need to get the value for my IRA. Yes, you can absolutely do that. In fact, I just did that um, in December for my property okay. that I have an IRA just yeah. to take a look at and see what's yeah. going on out there. So. And so your 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 IRA can grow in value. It's unlimited how much it can grow. Contributions, how much you can put in, is limited, but th but the uh, growth is not limited or capped. At so all. then that leads into my next question: Is can I borrow money with my IRA? Wow, you know that is like one of the <laughs> best questions because everyone misunderstands, especially in real estate. My background is is mortgage. You know, in real estate. To lending, money, yeah, money, right, money. yeah. yeah. When, when I found out, wait, they'll lend my IRA money. It's not a loan to me. It's a loan to my IRA. Yes, that's so you're, cool. Yeah, well, tell me more. Tell well, your me IRA, more. you know, like you and I would go get a loan. We buy a house. We get a, like a conventional, conforming FHA, VA, Fannie, Freddie, whatever right. kind of loan. But an IRA borrows a non-recourse loan, money from a non-recourse lender. Now, we non-recourse has a couple of, right. of of definitions, but in this case, what it means is it's a loan made to the IRA. If the IRA defaults, they can only come against the subject property, not against you okay. as a person. Okay. And not against any assets that the IRA owns. And are they using that? Are they going to do an appraisal on that property and look at the value of it? Uh, yes. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Right. And what's the loan to value on something like that usually? Right. So it, it could be it's a lot higher than you might expect. Your okay. IRA needs to have a lot of skin in the game for a typical non-recourse okay. loan, like maybe 40, 50, 60 percent okay. skin in the game. That and then, makes sense. And then more. And uh, so the rates are about the same as uh, regular lending because the risk, you know, it's all about the risk. Right. But what they really are looking at, the under are looking at what is the cash flow of this property bottom bottom line do we want to make this loan well let's look at the cash flow that's pretty much how they're going to determine it very cool so I could borrow the money for the new roof if I needed it yeah. or I could borrow the money to buy another property because it is within my you IRA? could do a cash out refinance on an IRA and property okay. with a non-recourse loan but here comes the big you know the big however 
um, that is a, it's taxable. The so glitch. Okay. yeah, the glitch. Oh, the glitch. Okay. So the income you earn from borrowed money is taxable. So just to make it okay. real clear. Okay. Say for example, you because we're we're trying to defer our taxes. Here. Yeah, we and, really and are. And just to re remind everyone, this is investment only property. I said that at the very beginning. You're not going to live in this house. Your cousin's not going to live in this house. Can, can family members cousins rent can it? though? Cousins can. Cousins but are not cool. immediate family. Well, not my brother couldn't. Your brother could. Couldn't. Your brother my can. Brother can. Okay. So it's parents and grandparents, you and your spouse, okay. children and grandchildren, up and down the family tree. But oh, okay. siblings and cousins and aunts and uncles are okay. Oh, okay. Are okay. All right. Cool. So say for example, your IRA owns this house and you get this thousand dollar rent check. Well, you borrowed sixty percent and your IRA came up with forty percent, and here comes a thousand dollar rent check. Well, $400 of it your IRA earned because you saved, but $600 of that uh, money your IRA earned because of borrowed money. Gotcha. So that okay. $600, the, mon the money your IRA earned because of, you know, it earned because of borrowed money. money. That's yes. taxable. Correct. Okay, and, and there's no way around that. No, and well, there are some there are some ways around it, like a solo 401k isn't subject to that tax. And, okay, and <clears> so, <throat> so these types of loans <coughs> might be for a short term or, or they could be they could really be 30 year loans okay. too they okay. could be so it, it's up to but so you, you are going to be paying out. taxes on the income earned right but you're going to your ira is going to file a 990t so in this case you're going to take deductions you're going to talk to your tax person and get okay. information so when you pencil it out it could be the best thing you ever did gotcha it doesn't need to scare you away it could be a really good thing but just know this up front before you get involved and that's what we're here to talk to people about like how very to do cool. this very cool very cool so uh, my last question, we only have a couple minutes left, Kay. is can I use a self-directed IRA to raise capital for my project? Oh my gosh, yes. That is like the best thing ever. Do you know that there's $27 trillion? I like, want some of those. With a D. Give me I some know. of those dollars. <laughs> <laughs> in America, in retirement money, and only like 3% of that amount is in alternative assets. Wow. So you go to someone, you say, hey, look, do you have an IRA or do you have a 401k with the company you used to work for? If they say yes. Then you say, hey, do you know that you can take that money and invest in my project? That's awesome. And they won't, they'll be so surprised. And there can be uh, many different types of projects. Yeah. Right, yes, so, all different kinds. So uh, just in our last final few minutes, um, it's not just for real estate. When you say when you say not collectible, so not for my fine art. Correct. But for coins and well, some coins, as long okay. as they're U.S. minted coins with a certain uh, uh, fineness. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And what other things besides real estate? Well, uh, private placements. So private stock. You know, you've heard of like like crowdfunding, Reg C offerings okay. or Reg B offerings. Okay. You know, or, or Reg A, Reg Reg D offerings seem to be the most common. Uh, so SEC, SEC promulgated oh, okay. kind of offerings where somebody is raising capital. That's private stock, really common. Um, a note, my IRA can lend you money to go buy a car. You buy the car, you make your car payment to my IRA. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah. Well, I think people need to hear more about this. Well, thank you for can, the opportunity. they can call you. Tell, me, tell us how we reach you. We have a toll-free number. Perfect. Yeah. Toll-free. Call, call toll-free. <laughs> 866-538-3539. There we go. Okay, got to do there it. There we go. Operator <laughs> standing by. <laughs> <laughs> Operator standing by. Absolutely. And then for me, I just wanted to ask you my final question is what gets your creative juices flowing? Oh man, just oh gosh, it, it's it's opportunity. You know, when I see it, when I see the opportunity to to put stuff together, like wait a minute, if we do this and this I and this. I can see it's you're gonna, passionate about it. Very it's passionate very, about very it. Cool. It's fun. Very cool. Well, thank you for coming in today. Thank it you. It was great to see you. Appreciate and it. we'll chat again. It sounds like we have a lot more to talk about. We do, like uh, like real estate investing clubs and yeah, things like that. Very cool. Very cool. Well, thank you so much, everyone, for showing up today. You can reach me at roseannenitty at cox.net, or you can go to my website at nittygroup.com. And let's spell all that. Yeah, because oh, it's okay. two T's. Okay. Yeah, yeah, it is. And Roseanne's a little different. Isn't Roseanne it? would be R-O-S-A-N-N-E-N-I-T-T-I. -N -N -E -N -I yes, I'm Italian, at cox.net. And my website is nitti, N I T T I group.com. Okay, thanks it. for coming in today. Any final thoughts? Any last, uh, you, you want to give them so your little out, uh, your, your little thought as you leave everybody here? I do. I, I just say, whatever you do, save for retirement. Go write yourself a check and pay yourself instead of the IRS. Save because we're all going to be older. You know? And when I say creative juices, this is a creative way for you to invest your money. And yeah. that's what I love about it. All right. So thanks so much. You've been listening to Keeping It Real Estate with a couple of real experts, Roseanne Nitty and friends.
right here in Orange County's only community radio station, octalkradio.net. Everyone knows that moving is one of the most stressful times in a person's life. 